And in my studies, it has been shown that our culture of people believe our ancestors continue to live on and desire to guide us from the spirit realm. Creating an ancestral shrine is one way we can honor our ancestors. So, um, in sisterhood, let's commit to learning about these things and teaching each other. I got help with setting up my ancestral shrine from a sister. Um, also, one of my closest sister friends She's always keeping me in the know about African spiritual programs that are happening in the community. And if you have a cultural center like that in your community, um, maybe you and your sisters can attend together. Um, <clears throat> spirituality is at the core of who we are. As a people, we've always been... Um, We've always had regard for our creator and have always shown sincere reverence for the essence that is higher than ourselves. We've always respectfully valued divine power. And I am uh, still learning about my act and the 42 laws, but I'm discovering that too is part of African spirituality. And many other cultures have in fact taken from and intentionally misconstrued our spiritual practices to form their religious ideals. All right, so <clears throat> number four, the centrality of motherhood. Oye Wume, I first actually learned about her from the book entitled Embracing Sisterhood, which I learned about from <laughs> the book Sisterhood Heals. And I will list all of these um, resources in the comment post of um, comment section of this post. But um, Oye Wume teaches us that in many African societies, there is no sisterhood without motherhood. The most profound sisterly relations are to be found in co-mothering, which is the essence of community building. Co-mother is the preferred idiom or saying in many African cultures for expressing the relationship amongst women. And Mothering extends beyond birth or just the rearing up of your own children, as we know that childless women too can mother. And many have nurtured and contributed to the rearing of children of other mothers outside of herself. So how can we accomplish this co-mothering in sisterhood? Mama Ina Yabarudi, again from her lecture on African womanhood about sisterhood, said that living close together deepens a love and that when we live in the same neighborhoods and raise our children together, that we are creating opportunities for ourselves and our children to experience this kind of deep love. These are bonds that are built and strengthened through time and result in lifelong relationships. Now, I do have a personal experience of that. Um, my parents, when we moved into our childhood home, um, I don't think they were aware at the time of the move, but there were actually two other families on the same street that had children close in age to my sister and I. And so we literally grew up together, like from the time we were eight, nine years old, all the way through college. And um, we, we had a chance to share life together, right? We were um, experiencing um, 
we were we were we were experiencing seasons of life together. We'd been at each other's weddings. Uh, we shared in the raising of our children. And <clears throat> I know, like them, I feel pretty fortunate to have friends that had been around for 30 plus years and counting. That is very exceptional, very remarkable, very special. Um, and again, like I said, to this day, we remain friends. To this day, we remain friends. Now, just imagine the power that we can harness as sisters if we made intentional efforts to move into the same neighborhoods with our tribe of like-minded culture keepers. How much more love safety and security and support could our families enjoy. And you gather enough of those families together and now we've built and empowered an entire community. <clears throat> okay, the last ideal that Oye Wumi shares um, about sisterhood um, and this broader ideal set of values that bound women to women as well as women to men is number five. Shared power between men and women and of gendered institutional practice where it is beneficial to the self-determination and agency of family and community. So my thoughts here. In sisterhood, we're always working in partnership with our men and for the collective good of our people. We are never in a power struggle with our men. And I'm going to refer to um, the book entitled Complementarity by Baba Baruti and he said, for Africans, even in those areas where both male and female command a significant amount of expertise, aggressive competition between the sexes does not come into play. Areas in which male and female knowledge and talents overlap allow for the continuous and relatively smooth operation of the family when either spouse is absent. This is why Male with female unions are more productive than lone individuals could ever be. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he goes on to say, as a core principle of Mayotte, complementarity speaks to two differently qualified yet intimately interacting beings, forces, or things diligently and continuously working toward a healthy, holistic balance. It is the drive to maintain equilibrium between two beings, forces, or things that must work together if either expects to survive and reach its full potential in the community of their universe. So <clears throat> the part where Oye Wumi uh, references gendered institutional practice, um, I dug a little deeper in that and actually um, I found more understanding in the complementarity book um, where it speaks to rites of passage, um, programs for boys and programs for girls where those rites of passage programs for boys are taught by men and the rites of passage programs for girls are taught by women. And so that would be an example of a gendered institutional practice. Uh, however, yet and still, even where we are different, we are never separate or apart from each other in our thinking and practices of togetherness. We always operate with family and community at the forefront. So 
<clears throat> uh, I think I'm missing a point. No, I am not missing a point. Okay. So what does this look like for us as sisters? I think this means we are ongoingly working to make sure we partner with our men directly or indirectly in the rearing of our children, in our relationships with each other, and in the protection and preservation of our people. Sisters, who are the men in your lives? Let's be intentional about communicating this with them. <clears throat> Messenger of Culture, Dantrell Montgomery, shared a post on his Instagram page, and I'll share it with you now. It is having a place in one's heart where every other person dwells. For when you are in that place in me, and I am in that place in you, we are knitted by a strong bond into a whole. In like manner, you share my pain and I share yours. It's done by seeing yourself in me and I seeing myself in you. Because I see myself in you, I will value you as much as I value myself, bearing in mind that whatever affects you affects me. In Njikoka, the community is placed first before the self and the interest of others before one's personal interest. So my final thoughts, <clears throat> if we are to affect real change for our people, we must commit to embracing what our culture has to say about our existence. And we must bring it into our everyday lives. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to chatting with you on this subject and um, look forward to hearing about ways that you are practicing sisterhood uh, within your circles. Kwa Utamaduni for the culture. <laughs>